<laughs> ah yes, it has come. The day has come. The time has come where Topson will be griefing all your pubs with my help. There's nothing you can do about it. I'm here to ruin every single match you ever will play again. I'm going to make sure you lose every single game in your next 10 games guaranteed. And that is why today we're going to be following Topson on his journey of mid techies. I'm going to be giving every tip and trick I've learned from watching his gameplay so that you can apply it as well. And in all seriousness, as a quick PSA, because I don't actually want to see your pups get griefed, for all of you who plan on trying this, if you do give it a go, I recommend you play it strictly on Radiant and, as I'll mention in the future, and you try it in unranked. Play it in unranked. If you have like an 80% win rate in unranked with it, okay, maybe then you're really good and you should bring it to ranked. In fact, you guys can do that for any hero. But if you're playing techies or want to try this, try it in Unranked, okay? Like, let's not be too toxic yet. Like, let's not grieve too many games. And on top of that, I want to mention, if you guys are looking to learn about heroes such as Meepo, Shadow Fiend, Lion, honestly, there's so much. Beastmaster, Jungle, that's that's probably the number one. Uh, if you want to learn about Beastmaster, Jungle, from your boy speed, or a hero like Lion in the mid game, how to support well, or Meepo in depth, we have so many good videos on the Game Leak website right now that have just recently come out. And I recommend you guys check them out. Just click the link down below right now. Pause the video. Just click it down below. Give it a try, all right, for a month. There's also a 10-day money-back guarantee. Just give it a shot. You can literally watch the videos and then be that annoying guy who's like, hmm, I've watched 8 million videos, but I want a refund. Like, you can still do that. Just check out the videos and let's get into the content. All right, so getting right into the game, as I said, I recommend you really play Radiant Techies. Uh, dire Techies is a bit weird to place bombs for. You still can do it, and I'm sure there's ways to work around it. However, right now, the strategy that I know is exactly what Topson's going to do. So this is before the game even started. And it's very important. You're going to notice, obviously, the clock is ticking down because it's pregame. He's going to place the three bombs you get because you get three charges from techies. One on the left and one on the right side of the stairs and then one on this side area. Now, I'm sure he hasn't perfected this in his brain. Like, this might not be optimal optimal, but it is important to note that these bombs will come into play later on. On top of that, this ward also allows you to stack this camp, which is very important. Always, 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 if you're playing a hero that wants to stack this camp and you are ranged, uh, j just place a ward here. It's really convenient. After that, you're going to want to walk back to base to refill your mana, and then you're going to go back to blocks. So this is just a really efficient way to start your game. If you're quick enough, you can get the bombs down and get your block off, and that's going to increase your efficiency later on. As part of mid techies is actually to farm. Your hero is very good at farming, and we'll talk about it. Getting into the laning stage, really what you're going to want to do in the laning stage is just kind of hit the other person. Like, I'm not going to lie, guys. The main advantage to techies is you buy these stat items, right? Buy two circlets, a mantle, a branch, a fairy fire, and then just hit your opponent because you have very long range. So if they walk even relatively up, which most players will, especially if you are not 6k, 7k at MMR, most people will walk out of position consistently. And then you should just auto attack them because you can hit people without drawing aggro. And, right, you're going to get a lot of damage. That's exactly what he does here. It takes about a fourth of the lone druid's HP by simply right-clicking him to start off the lane. And again, to notice he keeps doing this, right? Don't really go for denies if you can hit the person, right? He's going to go for it there and actually does get one, which is insane against lone druid. But for the most part, you're just going to be going for CS and hitting people. Going for denies is very, very... I don't know, I think it's a waste of time when you can simply use the fact that your opponent is distracted when going for last hits and hit them with your long range. Because your hero does have 45 damage with this build, which is pretty high. And therefore you do, you know, the damage adds up and you're going to see it come into play later on, right? Lone Druid wants to see us, he hits him instead. This is the main fundamental of, of how to win as techies here. If you don't constantly hit them to the maximum efficiency, which most players never even come close to doing, you won't be able to win lane as a hero like techies. You just won't. And now because he harasses him, he sees that the lone druid is worried about the range creep. He jumps in, blast off, first blood. And really guys, I want you to pay attention to the fact that that was a slow buildup. It took him a minute of harassing to go for the kill. A lot of people think getting kills is outplaying, like, like you spend 10 seconds outplaying them. No, good players always look at it as a slow buildup. How do you take every little advantage and, and make it work in the long run? And really now the cycle continues. Just because you got one kill doesn't mean you should stop pressuring. In fact, it's the opposite. You should continue to put pressure. On top of that, you're going to see at 155, he's going to stack this camp, which is exactly what you want to do. Right, pull it out, get the stack, and that's going to be your efficiency for later on. On top of that, don't use bombs in the early waves. For the most part, your opponent, if they're paying any attention, will just kill them and they'll get the gold. Also, you want to keep the lane back, right? Keep that in mind. You want to keep the lane back. So get a good block so you can hit your opponent um, and do not bomb it early on. Now that he's playing for efficiency and he thinks that the lone druid is no longer a kill target, uh, he's going to swap his priority. This is how high MMR players function. 
They hardcore pressure when they see a gap, right? Lone Druid level 1 is pretty killable because you don't have lifesteal yet. And then Lone Druid level 3 starts to get a ton of lifesteal, right? He's going to have two levels in Bear, one in Spirit Link, start getting the shared lifesteal, and therefore his harass is going to be somewhat negligible. So can he get a kill? Potentially. But is it worth the attempt when Lone Druid has hit his power spike? No. Instead, he's going to commit suicide, refill his mana, get some damage on, and come back to lane later on. Also, one little tip that you must use if you're playing the mid lane or even side lane techies is if you put down a bomb that you want to explode, make sure you stand on top of it. Right, this is just to make sure that they misclick and can't really click the bomb. So I think Lone Druid there was considering trying to click it, but he couldn't get it. And actually, if the Lone Druid messed up and left this bear in there, it would have died. So really keep that in mind. Make sure you put down the bombs and stand on top of them to make sure they don't die. Following that up here, we're going to see the prowess of just the long range attack range from Techies. Right, he's just hitting this Lone Druid, has level 2 blast off, right, gets two auto attacks in before committing the blast off and secures the kill. Pretty comical how straightforward that looked, and why did it happen? Well, it's because he harassed him throughout the last two minutes, he got the Tusk gank, right? Tusk actually didn't even do too much there, to be honest. But mostly it's because he harassed him with the previous blast off. So use your mana, blast off, right? And then maybe when you respawn, you can get a kill just like Thompson did. And then following that up here, we're going to see the major efficiency, which comes into play with these bombs. So what you're going to see here is that he aggroes the first camp, then the second from the low ground, which you could do with this high ground ward, which is why this high ground ward is a requirement. It is a requirement, you have to put this down, and then when you bring them out, right, you're gonna be able to explode every single camp with these bombs. It's not perfect, and I'm sure if you do this a lot and really get down the timing, you can make it even closer, but as you can see, he's gonna keep aggroing them out, making sure he's using the bombs to full efficiency by putting them on that cliff. On top of that, at this point, once you have level 3 bombs, you one-shot creep waves, and because of that, you just want to shove in the lane. That's... About all I have to say about this early game techies. The one thing I do want to mention is item builds. Please do not buy like a Soul Ring and an Orb of Venom. That is unbelievably bad. I see techies buying Orb of Like guys, it got nerfed. All right, it's been bad for a bit now. Stop. Just buy phase boots, buy your Null Talisman so you have movement speed. You can get in range for things. This is going to allow you to close the gap. I really do mean that. I really do think the phase boots are pretty crucial. Treads can be okay if you're just going for like real farming and right click build. That can be all right. But as you're going to see, he's always placing his own wards on that hill, buying clarities and playing for efficiency at this point. And now let's see a very well-played engagement by Topson that allows him to get two kills. So right off the bat here, his Tusk is going in, just going for a D-word, and he's going to lead in not with Blast Off, but with auto attacks. Um, the reason for this is you do not want to overcommit too early. Blast Off you generally want to use to finish off kills. You can use it to initiate if they have like a blink or, you know, let's say you have a line gank and you have to silence a puck or something like that. That can be good, but for the most part here, he's leading with auto attacks. Once he gets in range and has a slow from his support, goes for a bomb, didn't protect it, so the bomb ends up dying. Um, I think maybe he should have stood on top of it, but he wanted to get to the high ground. Then puts down a bomb, goes for the auto attacks, and finishes off the kill with simple right clicks. And if he doesn't have phase boots and no talismans, there's no way he gets that kill with right clicks. And then, of course, using the blast off to finish the kill. That's always what you want to do. You generally want to end fights with blast off. Uh, not always, and we'll talk about that, but for the most part in the early game, you want to make sure you're trying to deny yourself or finishing kills with Blast Off. Getting into the 8 minute mark, or I want to say more so the 7 minute mark, I think it's very important that you just start casually bombing camps. Now, the only camp you can't really kill is the Mud Golem. Obviously, they resist your damage. But as long as you're pretty careful about, you know, the camps you choose, you're going to be able to get all the jungle items for your team, send them back to base, and help the boys out. And that's exactly what we see from Topson. He instantly gets an Ocean Heart. Unfortunately, does end up falling in the mid lane, but it doesn't really matter. He's just starting to get his items, levels, and that's exactly what you want to do on techies. Your hero is not a ganker. You're funny enough, a tower defender, right? You defend mid to the best of your ability, and you are a flash farmer. You kill a ton of camps really, really quickly, right? He has almost 70 CS in nine minutes, and that is including the fact that he's dead, right? He's died three times. Well, I mean, some of them are suicides, obviously, but two of them are not. The next thing I want to mention is that he really does not put a priority on stacking green bombs, and I kind of agree with this. They're just expensive in terms of mana. Now, I know the red ones are, you know, more expensive, but if we look at the damage, it's quite significantly different. The red ones do 800, the green ones only do 300 at this point in the game, so obviously you're going to be using the red ones to kill camps for efficiency. But yeah, you really do not have enough mana unless you buy mana items to spam bombs on techies. Now, this might seem weird. It's like, why would I play techies and not buy a ton of mana items? Well, you do, kind of. You buy a wand, two gnolls, clarities, he has an arcane ring, so that's good and all, right? He, he's doing it sort of, but for the most part, you're looking to be in between, right? You don't want to overcommit to bombs because then you can't really contribute in fights other than the occasional blast off, and you don't want to overcommit to right click because then you literally can't use bombs and you can't farm, you can't scale, you can't defend towers. It's pretty bad. 
Moving on here, I want to show a genius gank onto the Slark. He plays this absolutely perfectly. So he's going to wait for his blast off and you can see he's pinging his bat rider to tell him, hey, bring him towards me. The most important thing here is that he does not show. If you show against a hero like Slark or, you know, Puck or Quap, they're simply going to disengage from your abilities. But in this case, the Slark gets lassoed. He does a really good job lining up the blast off and then puts down the green bomb. You want to focus the green bomb when people are low, more so than the red one, because people can run away from the red one and not the green one. I know it's pretty simple in, in concept, but a lot of people mess this up. They blast off, then instantly prioritize the red one, which can be okay if someone is stunned or slowed, but techies can't really do that, right? You can't really put down your, your W and trap them to put down your Q. It doesn't really work like that. So therefore, you want to do what I just said. On top of that, we're going to see a genius skank here. I mean, no joke, this is actually... So he leads down, putting the proximity mine and status trap in the trees. Then he's going to bait the Slark in a little bit. So he goes for the blast off here after, right, the Slark runs into the bomb. And I didn't even know this worked like this, but the range of these things is insane. It's broken, actually. And what you're going to see is that the Slark walks into it, gets hit by the red bomb, follows it up with the blast off, and then finishes the kill. He actually didn't even use his blade mail, which he could have to reflect the Slark damage, but throws down the red bomb and solo kills a Slark. And it's important to note that this Slark is not a noob. This Slark, although you could argue maybe he should be on strength treads, has stats, right? This is a high MMR player who's buying the correct items to make Slark somewhat tanky, but still ends up going down. Moving on to into the mid game, it's very important that you do a couple things in my opinion. Number one, Use the red bombs as much as possible. Like, I think it's much more important to prioritize red bombs. As you're going to see here, he covers the stairways, and this is really good. It basically prevents the enemy team from invading anywhere. He just has the typical status trap, two red bombs, right? This is pretty basic techies, but if you didn't know it, this is what you do. You, you just block staircases with red bombs and a stasis trap on top. He has a green one on this one. It doesn't really matter too much. And then following that, the way you really farm is you just put down red bombs on top of creep waves. This is about it. That's kind of generally how you're going to get farmed on techies. There's no other major strategy besides making stacks. You actually are extremely good at farming stacks. Following that up, he decides to go for a Vela Discord, which I really like. It makes you really tanky, right? He has nine all attributes. And of course, it gives you quite a bit of mana regen as it builds from a Bassy. And finally, obviously the 20% increased magical damage makes a ton of sense on techies. All right, let's take a look at a mid game team fight just so you guys know the general basis behind, you know, fighting on techies. So right off the bat here, he's staying on the outside. Obviously, you're not looking to frontline or really right-click people to start. To be fair, he actually does have quite a bit of right-click damage, but I want to pay attention to his talents. He has the 20% magic resist and the 240 blast off damage, making blast off an 840 damage nuke that is amped by Veil. So he leads in the fight by using the Veil, right? Then blasts off in, and you're going to notice, unfortunately, he actually, I think, missed everyone. <laughs> uh, but that is the general idea. Uh, try to hit people with your blast off. I mean, obviously I'm kidding to some extent, but then you're going to pop your blade mail, which actually reflects quite a lot of damage to the sniper and to people in AoE damage that you barely can even see, but it really does have a, a pretty profound impact. On top of that, he used his red bomb. I think he threw down a green one as well, but primarily your main focus is casting Veil, then your blast off, and then getting assassinated. And next up, this upcoming fight here is really why I love this item build so much. The survivability of this build is absolutely insane. So first up, he gets roared away here. Of course, he's still going to commit the blast off to finish the kill. It is totally fine to use it on one person to make sure you secure it. On top of that, he puts down a red bomb to basically damage the Slurk that was going on him. And I really love the build with the blade mill, the wand, and the ghost scepter now to follow it up. He's able to live. I mean, if you look at the enemy team, this is just perfect itemization. They have absolutely nothing to deal with the ghost scepter. They really do have like almost no magical damage other than this support sniper that is somehow popular. Upcoming here, I want to show off a very important clip. So they were invading the tier 2 tower, and instead of bombing the tower, he's actually setting up bombs that will secure the fight while they're pushing the tower, which is kind of a cool thing, because techies actually can siege towers. Your proximity mines do quite a bit of damage, um, but I actually don't recommend you spend most of your game trying to push towers. You can do it here and there, and I'm sure it's effective, but I think for the most part, you're better off farming and setting up traps like this. And that's what he does here. He's starting to ping it, basically telling his team, hey guys, run to here. And you have to ping and, and tell them in your mic or in chat, mainly spam pings on your bombs to get them to run there. You're also going to see him bait the Slark here over to the bomb. Unfortunately, the Slark is, I guess, smart enough not to run to it, but you can continue to see him basically pinging it, saying, hey guys, got to bait them here, got to bait them here. Now, as I said, this is like, and you can even look at the numbers. This is like literally the highest of highest MMR games. So people are super smart. Also, guys, this is legit, like, He's winning in ranked against these MMR players, so clearly this has some merit. Of course, he's one of the best players in the world as well right now. But as you can see, there's trains just literally tanking bombs. So how often is that going to happen in your average 2k to 3k MMR pub? Probably never, but 
you know, that's a strategy you should be using. And now I'm coming to here, I really like how his build comes together. I think this is pretty, pretty cool actually, and this is where Techies becomes a real menace. So now, he is level 25, and of course this gives you the 251 damage talent. Also, I'd like to note at level 20, he took minus 22 seconds of blast off cooldown, making blast off a 13 second cooldown, which is pretty cool. It works very well with the magic resist and blast off damage talent. Following that, he also has a leveler, so I really like the fact that he has a silver edge now, which gives you a lot of damage, right? It gives you in total 45 attack speed, considering agility gives attack speed, right? So it gives you 45 attack speed, obviously a lot of attributes, and in total 60 damage, right? Because you get damage from the int and then 45 damage. So this is really one of the better right click items in the game. It also lets you be super mobile, hard to kill. And finally, he has the leveler, which I think is an awesome item for techies in combination with this level 25 talent. He can no joke siege the high ground forest team. He is the high ground siege here actually, funny enough. And uh, it's just such a cool combo where you get the bonus tower damage from the leveler, the 60 attack speed, your 251 damage talent, and you no joke can go high ground with very little threat. And this is going to be about all for the video. I hope you guys learned a lot about techies and I really recommend you pay attention and maybe even rewatch so you really can pay attention to the small efficiencies of this hero. Because I think if you don't flash farm mid and really take into consideration what I was saying about, you know, stacking camps and using the bomb tricks, this hero will feel like a very underwhelming Ember Spirit or Void Spirit. Like, why wouldn't you just pick those heroes then? And I do believe that to be the case. However, if you can threaten mid by harassing people, and then combine your proximity mine efficiency with these kills, you're actually going to be able to be a top nowhere hero throughout the game. In fact, if we look right now, he's number two on the list, which is insane because your hero actually scales pretty well, right? You scale pretty well with your talents. They, they are pretty potent. And that's why I think this hero does have some legitimacy. I think Thompson is currently like five and two in his recent matches on it. You guys can check that and, you know, uh, you know, tell me if I'm wrong or not. But really, this has been working pretty okay for him. And that's why I think it is somewhat legit. Uh, it's just a fun little video. Guys, remember, don't grief your pubs with this. Give it a chance in unranked. Then once you figured things out and are starting to apply the tips I've given, start to transition it over. But thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. And hey guys, remember, before you end this video, in the link down below, I've been playing a lot of live games where I talk about my thoughts in real time in the middle of a Dota match. So if you want to get in the head of a pro player, click the link down below to the Game Leap website. Super cheap right now, right? Like, and I'm doing this a ton. We all have time on our hands. I have time to make content. You guys probably have time to enjoy and learn Dota, get better at the game. So yeah, if, if that combo works for you, click the link down below and I'll see you there.